I am going to record this in one take. And I'm going to try my absolute hardest not to cry, not to mumble, but I cannot guarantee you anything. Um, for those who are new, if you stumble across this video, I recommend it. What's good is your boy Bugsy. I am a Dragon Ball fan, as I'm sure you can tell. And I'm really, really hurt. And I'm more hurt than I could possibly imagine. As of yesterday, March 7th, 2024, the entire world found out that Akira Toriyama is no longer here. And he passed away originally on March 1st, 2024, but they waited a week to let the people know, I guess, to get all the family affairs stuff done, like the funeral and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I made a video in December about the anime that changed my life, and it was the Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z really is the anime that changed my life, and I already feel the tears coming. I don't think I have any more tears to, to, cr to, to cry. You know, I, I don't know what the, 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 the rhyme, stone, rhyme style tweet is, but let me, let me pull it up so... Uh, you know, I say it right, but I think he said, uh, give me a second, fellas, give me a second. It's a sad day for rain. And that's how I feel. That's, that's really how I feel. And, you know, I just, I want to say thank you to Akira Toriyama, man, because I think in my video, I did say thank you because... The anime really did change my life. And it's, it's much bigger to me than just an anime or just a TV show. Like, I started watching Dragon Ball back during the, when the pandemic had started. When everything was crazy, everything was on lockdown. I had nothing else to do. And then one of my friends introduced me to Dragon Ball. And I watched Dragon Ball Super subbed. <laughs> I didn't even watch it dubbed. And... um. I just enjoyed it so much. I didn't care about the plot points. I, I saw Kamehameha's and I saw a bunch of other cool shit that I thought I would never see. And, uh, you know, eventually I watched Dragon Ball Super going into my senior year of college. And I watched Kai and I just sat there for like a whole day, a day and a half because it was the weekend. I think like Friday through Sunday, I watched all of Kai and I was in love with Dragon Ball, man. And I just remember watching when Vegeta first died on Namek. And that was the first time tears came to my eyes. I'm talking about like, you know, tears like rolling down my face, etc. Because what I saw in Vegeta was what I saw in myself a little bit. And of course, over time, we see the development God, I'm trying not to cry, dog. I'm really trying not to cry. Um, I see the development of Vegeta and Goku. I said Goku. I almost said Goku and Gohan at the same time. But I see the development of every single character. We've seen monsters get turned into to, to men. We see Piccolo caring for Gohan. We see Goku being a great father, even though there's memes about him not being a great father. And, you know, Vegeta... Uh, it's it just something that resonates with me so much, man. And it resonated so much that I got a, a Vegeta tattoo. I have a Trunks tattoo. And I also have a, a Broly tattoo. Like, I really do love this shit, man. And it meant so much to me that I wasn't expecting to get the news about. Uh, and I got, you know, I got a whole bunch of Dragon Ball stuff. I have a little... Kid Goku right here taking a nap. UI Goku and Super Saiyan Vegeta and uh, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and then S Broly and then Gogeta with Super Saiyan God Goku and Vegeta and I got Funko Pops right here and it's just, it hurts. I have a high ground keyboard that's showing uh, the lookout with the hyperbolic time chamber and I have a a high ground mouse that I don't want to pull up because I don't want it to, you know, mess up my recording. 
I, I got a Dragon Ball hoodie right here, man. Like, you know, we, we got Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Like, I'm hurting, dog. <laughs> I'm I'm really, really hurting. And, you know, when I when I got the news, because when my homies text me was like, He texted me and was like, yo, like, look at this. Look at this. And I, I click on the link. I'm thinking this this got to be capped because the caption said, you know, Akira Toriyama had passed. And I clicked on it and I saw that gold check mark. And I saw it was from the official Dragon Ball, like, English Twitter account. And... <sighs> I didn't want to accept it. I was actually about to play Valorant because I just got back to the apartment because I had to go do something real quick. And it hurt me, man. Like, it really, really hurt me. It didn't really register until about 10 to 15 minutes later because, you know, I was training with my boy Kensei. And I was like, yo, like, I can't play. Like, I'm going to bed. Like, it's, I saw the curatorium. I'm going to just pass away. Like, my whole night is, is ruined. And I go to the bathroom to, to get ready for bed, and I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera right now, but I'm just, y'all got to bear with me for this video, man. I, I remember I was in the bathroom, and I was just on Twitter on my For You page, and I'm seeing nothing but people showing hella love and respect towards Akira Toriyama, and then I'm seeing this picture of a young Akira Toriyama, and he's smiling, man. And I remember, you know, just going through the Dragon Ball Lord, I'm going to get back to the the whole tweet thing. How Akira Toriyama didn't even want to write Dragon Ball anymore. And how he didn't even like the franchise anymore. Because of all the nasty responses he got during the, 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 after the Cell Saga. And I remember I was just, you know, washing my clothes. Cause I went to work this morning, you know. And I just, I, I literally, I saw what, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember her name. Give me a second. I saw what the Japanese voice actor Goku VA Japanese. I saw what Masa uh, Maseko Nazawa. She didn't have a response, and I saw Christopher Sabat say, "You know, I'll see you in other world." And the the at Goku account said, "You know, King Kai has granted passage to Akira Toriyama," and I just. I saw what Oda said. I saw what Toyotaro said. I saw what uh, I saw what all of them said. And I think when I believe it was Oda said, "I hope heaven is what you envisioned it in your manga." That shit broke me, man. Like. I'm not the kind of person to cry. I'm not the kind of person to to really get emotional, especially over, you know, animated characters or, or even people in real life. But when I was seeing how much Akira Toriyama meant to... See how much he meant to everybody. That shit hurt. Because I don't think anybody... I apologize. I don't think anybody envisioned Akira Toriyama ever passing. Like, I don't think it registered in people's head. Like, pe people didn't go like, oh, well, Akira Toriyama's old. Like, he gonna pass away. Like, no. Like, we all thought, like, he would live forever. Or at least finish Dragon Ball Super. And, you know, I I'm going into Omega Pro stream and I'm seeing everybody in his chat just being so sad and you know, everybody's reminiscing on the moments that Dragon Ball had, which. <laughs> oh, fuck. Which, you know, which, which, which people grew up with. And I know I'm a, I'm a late bloomer to anime and Dragon Ball, but as an adult, I feel like it hit so much. You know, it hit a lot for me because I didn't really have no father figure growing up like that. You know, like, you know, I kind of just did what I wanted and then. Seeing the idea of like perseverance and discipline and being the best of the best and you know strength is the only thing that matters in this world. Everything else a delusion for the weak. You know all of Vegeta's speeches, like the uh, 
I was the perfect warrior, cold and ruthless. I lived by my strength alone, uninhibited by foolish emotions. It just hurts, man. And, you know, when I was getting ready for bed and I, I came out here to grab a, a cup of water, man, like, I literally fell to my knees and just fucking fell out crying, dog. And I, I, I just, I could, man. I just cried. I cried and I cried and I cried. It was an ugly cry too. That's why I'm, I'm really trying not to get super emotional because if I know if I get emotional, I'm going to ugly cry and that's going to be the. I'm not trying to do that right now, but I remember I was just crying and you know I'm seeing people's favorite moments on uh, from Dragon Ball and I think the one that there was two scenes that really hurt the most and it, it wasn't even with Vegeta like. Because, you know, Akira Toriyama, like, his main focus was Goku. And the scene when, during the Cell Saga, when Goku realized that Gohan got too overconfident that the whole world was going to explode, he, you know, he stands up by himself and he has a serious look on his face and everybody's like, well, what are you doing, Goku? Like, what's going to happen? And then, you know, he turns around and he... He looks at the audience. He looks at the audience. Specifically Krillin. And he says goodbye to everyone. And he it's his, transmissions away to Sal and Gohan. And he tells Gohan, like, I'm proud of you. And, you know. Tell your mom I'm sorry that I'm not going to make it. And I need to part it. <laughs> I think the part that really got me the most was when Krillin yelled no. Because he already seen his friend die. And Gohan was obviously very upset. Because, you know, his dad got blown the hell up. And seeing all these different clips, like, when Grandpa Gohan came back, and Grandpa Gohan came back, and, you know, Kid Goku sees him, and he said, you know, I've been looking all over for you, and I couldn't find you, and it's like, he don't even know he killed his Grandpa Gohan. And then just seeing how... You know, all these moments in Dragon Ball that I kind of felt like, you know, was overlooked because, you know, I really cared about, you know, Vegeta more and stuff like that. But it just kind of showed me like, damn, like, like this shit hurt, bro. And then even the end of Z, um, you know, we see Goku fly away and he's gone. And then we see Goku going to, uh, you know, other world and he has the the angel wings and he looks back and he waves to the audience and and then there's one outro in uh super doing the the term of the power arc where it's showing like the trans the, the 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 transition from kid goku to adult goku and it 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 seemed like it was a goodbye like a farewell from you know a curatorium to the audience and you know, Kira Toriyama dealt with a uh, medical issue and apparently he had been dealing with it. Again, I think apparently, I don't know if this is uh, true. Also, this video will not be monetized. I probably should put that in the, in, in the beginning. But, you know, hearing that he was dealing with this for this issue for a, a year, he still decided to make Dragon Ball Daima. And, you know, a lot of people were shitting on it, saying, like, it looks stupid and we're going back to OG Dragon Ball or it's a GT remastered and... You know, from sources, they said that this was the happiest that he he was making Dragon Ball content. And maybe he didn't know, or maybe he knew he only had a limited amount of time. So, he wanted to go back to the roots for the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball. And 
and now you know he he didn't get to finish Dragon Ball Super. I have no idea how Super is going to end, you know. And you know, Toyo Taro, I have complete faith in him. And Toyo Taro responds, you know, that shit, that shit hurt too. And seeing, you know, all these different manga club, you know, talk about Akira Toriyama, like it, the whole world hurt, man. Like Dragon Ball Diamond is gonna be special because. It was his passion project, and, you know, even in Dragon Ball Super Broly, like, that was a fantastic movie, and even when Superhero came out, people didn't like the animation style, but, you know, it was greenlit by Akira Toyama, and I liked the movie, even when a lot of people disliked the movie, I thought it was a great movie, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I made that video in December giving him the flowers that he deserved, <sighs> and this, this shit hurts because... You know, alleged, not allegedly, but Akira Toriyama only, you know, he was by himself. Like, he stayed with his family. He didn't go to conventions. He didn't really do interviews. So, I don't know if he really knows the amount of people that he's affected in a good way. Especially within the black and, you know, Hispanic community. We ride for uh, Akira Toriyama, man. We love Akira Toriyama. And, like, you know, back, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the hood, people, you said you watch Dragon Ball. People didn't even call that shit an anime. It's not a Dragon Ball 5 game. Like, you know, Dragon Ball ain't no anime. Like, everybody loves anime. Everybody loves Goku. Everybody loves Vegeta. And it's like, you know, he made some of the coolest characters ever. He, he made Vegeta. He made Goku. He made Gohan. He, he made Broly. And, like, I think it goes without saying that Dragon Ball really did change my life and it gave me almost like the sense of purpose on like what I need to do when you know my morals and my values and how to be a man and I guess it sucks because the way that these characters were written it was a message to me and now the person that wrote those messages are is no longer here But I'm very grateful for the story of Dragon Ball, for the story of Dragon Ball Z. I'm very grateful for it all. I'm not even going to put a color correction on this. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just going to post it straight from OBS to uh, to YouTube. This really does hurt my heart. And I'm glad I, you know, haven't cried as much. Because I woke up in the morning... And as I listen to some, some Dragon Ball songs, and I don't, I don't know, man. I'm gonna be hurting for a while. I'm gonna be hurting for a cool little minute. I don't think that uh, I'll probably be okay for at least a couple of weeks. Not, not fully myself. Um, I was working on a, a Trunks video essay. That's going to be on hold for right now. I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back stronger for sure. And I was still like, oh, just, you know, just take a break. Like, why are you still emotional? Like, shut the fuck up. Like, if that's how you feel, then please get off my video. Like, please don't make it this far. I'm going to do the best I can. And, you know, it's so silly. You know, people were doing Kamehameha's as kids. People, you know, doing the fusion dance and, you know, even special beam cannons, whatever, like. Final flashes, like we all did these silly things, and you know, in our head, it's like, you know, what would Goku do? What would Vegeta do? And it's almost like they were a guide for us to to be better. Like, you know, Dragon Ball inspired a group of artists and you know, athletes and you know, content creators, man. And it's like without Dragon Ball, I wouldn't be here right now. Without Dragon Ball, I would have not played Dragon Ball Fighters. I wouldn't have been making anime content. I wouldn't have even discovered other animes without Dragon Ball. I wouldn't have met a lot of my friends without Dragon Ball. So, all this is really owed to Akira Toriyama. And, you know, my mom, like, she even likes watching Dragon Ball. She likes Kid Goku. She likes adult Goku and then, you know, Teen Gohan and... You know, I try to get my girlfriend to watch Dragon Ball. 
I got to try again with that because, you know, it was just pacing, whatever, right? But Dragon Ball has done so much for me. And, you know, I never got an opportunity to meet, you know, Mr. Toriyama uh, or anybody, you know. Ironically, I could probably stumble across, you know, Christopher Sabat or Sean McGimble out here in Dallas. I probably could if I wanted to. But I'm so sad. I'm so unbelievably sad. And, you know, I got home from work or even at work. I was crying this morning because I saw C-Reacts' video and that shit hurt me to the core, man. Like even Omega Pro, you know, he turned off his webcam and was crying. And I saw Lotus upload an hour long video and, you know, everybody is going through it. And it shows that as a Dragon Ball community, we can all come together and despite people saying, oh, well, Dragon Ball is not a good anime and Dragon Ball really didn't affect me. And it's like you sit here and look like it affected everybody. Everybody was affected by Dragon Ball. And I think people are now having this appreciation for what Dragon Ball did to them. You know, I was at work and I was crying. I came home, got in my bed and I was just seeing all of these different moments that people love from Dragon Ball and. It hit me again. I just started crying, man. I was crying. I went into the shower. I was fucking crying in the shower like an R&B singer, man. Like, I was just, I, I, I was distraught, and I still am distraught. I think my eyes are probably puffier than they've ever been because I've been crying for a day straight. And for anybody who's feeling the same way, I feel, bro, like, it, it's okay. Like, you can feel this way. And it's not stupid to feel this way either. Like, Dragon Ball has left an impression. An impression on all of us. Even for people who've never seen Dragon Ball. You know who Goku is. You know who Vegeta is. <sighs> I think I'm going to leave it at that. I am feeling a bit sad. I'm feeling tired. I just kind of want this. Nightmare to go away. But it's not a nightmare. Thank you. Thank you, Akira Toriyama. Thank you for Dragon Ball. Thank you for Dragon Ball Z. Thank you for Dragon Ball Super. Thank you for all the movies. Thank you for the Super Saiyan 4 design. Thank you for everything because I wouldn't be who I am today without the amazing anime that you wrote. And I do have the manga. I have the whole complete collection of the Dragon Ball Z manga sitting over there in the corner. And I will do justice by that. I'm going to read the entire manga. I may or may not make content on it. But, you know, from now on, I really am going to think, like, what will Goku do? What will Vegeta do? You know, you created Bardock. You created Trunks. Probably one of the coolest characters ever graced the, the, the planet. And I hope that you're resting in heaven. And, you know, like, like what Oda said, I hope heaven is what you envisioned in your manga. I hope it is, and I hope you're at peace. And, you know, one day I hope to see you there in another world. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. <sighs>